Hey everybody, I am S.N. Chakraborty, today sharing with you Indian political thinker Aurobindo Ghosh's concept on spiritual or cultural freedom and spiritual uh, or cultural nationalism. Aurobindo Ghosh born in 1872 and died in 1950, spent his childhood in England. He qualified in the civil services examination, but before completing their last leg of selection, he returned to India to support the freedom struggle of India against the British rule. He came and joined state services of Baroda now known as Vadodara in 1893. Since then, he came in touch with the militant and revolutionary groups in Bengal through his brother, a revolutionary known as Barin Ghosh. In 1906, he became the principal of Bengal National College in Calcutta. Meanwhile, for some time, he was associated with Congress too, until the split between moderates and the extremists within Congress came wide open into the public forum. Aurobindo was strongly influenced by the Irish freedom struggle, American independence movement, the Western liberal thoughts and the French Revolution. Vivekananda's Vedant philosophy also deeply influenced him. He followed the militant activism or militant stream of freedom struggle outside the Congress-led militant movement. He was the philosopher of and guide of the militant and revolutionary initiatives in Bengal since 1906 and until he was arrested and jailed in 1908. He came out of the jail in 1910, but since then he permanently distanced himself from the direct engagement with political uh, movement and activism, but he always supported and inspired national movement through his series of revolutionary writings in the journal called Karmo Jogin. His perception about freedom and nationalism can be divided into two parts. One is spiritual or cultural freedom and another is spiritual or cultural nationalism. He inculcated motherhood into nation by attributing divinity into it. At the same time, his divinity is not equated with religiosity or blind faith. Rather, he never gave up his militant ideas, revolutionary ideas of freedom and liberty. Aurobindo analyzes freedom from the larger context of human race. His concept of freedom of India was definitely the end of colonial rule, but at, at the same time, freedom from oppression of all the people across the world. He analyzes human existence in two parts. On the one side, it is physical and bodily existence, which is short-lived and perishable. On the other side, it is about the you know, human's knowledge, skill and capability through which human evolves and remains creative. 
in Aurobindo's thought, the second part, that is knowledge, skill, capability, wisdom, that is what is soul or spirit. So his spirituality is not about religiosity, but this kind of spirituality. And this knowledge, wisdom, skill, capability pass from one generation to another. In his view, this is how human, human civilization uh, progressively moves forward. But for harnessing this skill and capability, human needs a stable mental health. Uh, but the colonial rule of the British did not permit this space for the Indians. It deprived them of their basic needs and services. It did not allow them to develop and grow. Therefore, he advocates that the British rule had to come to its end because it harms the mental growth of the people of India and thus it also affects spiritual capability of the fellow uh, Indians. But then he did not limit his thoughts and concepts only in throwing the British from the motherland. Rather, the ultimate goal of human should be to form a world uh, composed of free nationalities and to free all human beings from discrimination. An ideal society is which where one human being is not subordinated by another human being. And this is not possible unless the people of India brings an end to the colonial rule of the British. As he said, nationalism is not a mere political program, but a way of life. To quote him further, liberty is the fruit we seek from sacrifice and the motherland, the goddess to whom we offer it. Into the seven leaping tongues of the fire of the Janga, we must offer all that we are and all that we have. Feeding the fire even with our blood and lives and happiness of our nearest and dearest. For the motherland is a goddess who loves not a maimed and imperfect sacrifice. And freedom was never won from the gods by a grazing giver. His idea of spiritual nationalism is developed from this perception. Saraj is necessary condition for India to accomplish the destined goal. At the same time, he cautions, saying that the French Revolution made liberty as their primary goal. And then it went for equality. And finally, it aimed to establish fraternity. He said, for this reason, the French Revolution failed. He therefore proposes to go other way for freedom movement of India. The first or primary goal of Indian freedom struggle should be fraternity among its diverse communities. With such a collective consensus, a common goal for freedom will develop and that objective will be shared by all communities. In that case only, the freedom will survive and become successful and stable and sustainable. After achieving independence, 
then India can strive for equality. This is in brief about Aurobindo's idea of spiritual or cultural freedom and nationalism. For clarification, you may put your questions in the commentary box and we'll get back to you. We have many more videos on PSIR subjects. If you wish, you can visit the channel and also experience them. If you like this presentation, then please subscribe the channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.